welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Modern at the request of Patreon subscriber Rowan, and this is Rowan's Rug Delirium. This is a deck that I played once on the channel before, quite a while ago, and it's a lot of fun. It's just a bunch of value cards, many of which are banned in Legacy, by the way. We got Ren and Six, Expressive Iteration, and Ragavan in this deck. Forget about it, Legacy, you couldn't have all this. All those are in a Traverse the Olvenwald core. Search your library for a basic land, reveal it. If it's Delirium, search your library for any creature or land instead. Put it into your hand. This brings together the toolbox of fun of creatures like Brazen Borrower, Endurance, Titania, and Fury. Got a couple of Goifs in here. They're going to be huge. And it's a Urza Saga deck. A robust Saga package. Zurin Orb, Aether Spellbomb, Expedition Map, Haywire Might, Pyrite Spellbomb, Shadow Spear, and Soul Guide Lantern up in here. Plus, Ren and Six can recur the Urza Sagas. Saga going to the graveyard is two land types through Delirium, or two card types through Delirium that Traverse and Tarmogoyf both care about. Lots of tutoring, lots of little decisions. We're going to see lots of cards and play ultimately pretty fair magic, but in a way that is full of tiny decisions and decision trees, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. A lot of nickel and dime type advantages here. A lot of grindy games, and I do like this kind of magic. I don't know if this kind of magic keeps up with the Scam and Tron and Omnath and Beans metagame of Modern. There's a lot of really powerful stuff going on, but we're going to do our best here. This is Rowan's Rug Delirium. Let's do it. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is now available for pre-order through Coalesce Apparel and will release in early December. These will sell out and take time to restock. The holidays are coming up fast. Place your pre-orders for yourself and the Boston Roll fans in your life today. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market with awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Boston Roll at checkout for 10% off your order at coalesceapparel.shop. I'm on the draw in round two with a hand that immediately has to make a decision if I keep it, whether I want to turn two to Armagoyf or hold up Lightning Bolt on turn one and maybe spike EI for turn three. I'm on the draw though, so I can afford to make that decision. After I get a little information. Wooded Foothills from the opponent. Fury in my hand. I think my plan here is going to be Baseju now. And then Urza Saga plus Goyf next turn. It's a small Goyf. An embarrassing little Goyf that dies to Lightning Bolt. But I think getting the pressure on is worth it. Okay, this looks like some Rhinos, perhaps. Catria Trium as the first fetch of the game. Could be any five-color bean deck, but... Rhinos is frequently among the, the decks that do stuff like this. Saga. Tarma Goyf. This Goyf does not die to fire. That's good. Because if they fire it, then an instant will be in the graveyard when the fire resolves, and I'll have a 2-3. They could Brazen Borrow to clear it. Or just get a tapped land. That's cool, too. More Rug Lands. A 3-drop spell. Rhinos confirmed here. Top card of their deck. Wow. Perfect. Just how we drew it up. Revealed nothing. Just put a bunch of rhinos into play. Oh, I have a 2-3. And I can evoke Fury to kill one of these rhinos. Then I'll have a 3-4. And then when Saga dies next turn, I'll have an even bigger creature. I think I should pitch the Lightning Bolt here. Though, am I going to have time to cast two EIs this game? Because Lightning Bolt I can cast after running Saga through its... Yeah, I actually think I'm pitching EI here. This is just more mana efficient, and it puts an instant into the graveyards. Subtlety, Pitching Force of Negation. Okay. A creature still ends up dead here, and Fury is still on top of my deck. I'll put Fury on top, and I could actually now just bolt Shardless Agent, block Rhino, and have... Oh, Shardless Agent's an artifact as well. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'm actually just going to bolt Shardless Agent right now before they can... Mystical Dispute, they'll have to force negation this, and they just pitched one to the subtlety. Now I just have a 5-6. Let's see if they want to send here. They're thinking about it. A pause in combat. Violent Outburst doesn't get over the finish line here. Fire does. 
And rhinos have trample, so brazen borrower clears this basically free and easy. Whatever, I'm gonna block if you attack. Yep, block all day, every day. Rhino's dead, I take four. What's the follow-up? They could pitch cast a fury, they could fire this to finish it off. Alright, fire is the answer, and I don't have a way to get anything else into the graveyard here. And I drew the fury that we knew was there. Surprise, surprise. Construct token. Either Spellbomb could just answer this rhino. And there is a Steam Vents in the deck, I hope. Yes, there is. That Wooded Foothills can fetch and do everything I needed to do. Yeah, I'm just going to get Aether Spellbomb here. Fetch Shock for the Steam Vents here. Is there any reason to wait? I don't think. I don't know if there's a reason to do it now or later. They played their fifth land tapped. That's lucky. That means they're not going to hard cast Fury this turn. Bounce your Rhinoceros. Oh no, there was a reason to wait. I blew it. I got blown out by this card a bunch of times the other day. Uh, okay. Yep, fuck me. I deserve this. This card is uh, still kind of new. It's the second time I've played Modern since it was printed, and uh, I did lose to it last time, so I should have known. Brutal. Okay. I do have Delirium. Is there anything worth tutoring for? Titania is too slow. The Fury's already in my hand. Brazen Borrower is not bad. It's not good either. It clears the Rhino, maybe, if they don't have the Mystical Dispute. Yeah, I think actually Brazen Borrower seems great here. Borrower, don't dispute me, bro. Okay, that's handled. And they have a 3-2. We don't need to be in this position. Main deck stifle, play around it, kids. Learn from my mistakes. They've got one card in hand and six mana available. Hardcast Fury is... Or hard, Hardcast anything, Subtlety, Fury, whatever, is available to them. Unholy Heat's a sicko. I can dash rag, see what they want to do about that, and then still Unholy Heat. If they have the subtlety, it's time. I can Unholy Heat and Endurance. I don't even know if they may deck those, but it could happen. Itcha. And my treasures... I exile a Scalding Tarn. My treasures are making my construct bigger. Fetching in the end step. I'm just going to heat this thing now in their upkeep before they can draw a Force Negation. But if they already have one, then yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. I just need to not take three somehow before this game is over. And because of the treasure, my construct's big enough to battle the Tide Binder. I am going to dash this rag. Really hope they don't have Violent Outburst right now. Okay, Ragavan connects. And I flipped a Dead Gone. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to dead this Tidebinder. And I guess pass the turn. I still lose to Violent Outburst, but please don't have it. They didn't have it. The comeback starts now. I'm not going to crack this fetch ever, because I don't want to lose to Fire Ice. Another fetch. Perfect. I dash the Ragavan. They're going to Subtlety now. It's a pretty good draw. Okay. Ragavan. Do I want this around? I could EI into it right now when I know there's a spell I could cast. Yeah, I'll put Rag on top and then blue red. Oh, I might lose if I do this. Uh, there are basics, right? There's no basic island. Yeah, I can't actually fetch basics and cast all my spells right now. So hold up, hold up. Back it up, back it up. I can't just pitch the EI to Fury this thing. Yeah, no island is actually brutal here. I can just play Brazen Borrower to block Subtlety. What's the safer way to do this? They have one card in their hand. Right, I'm going to cast Brazen Borrower, which makes my construct little again. But I think it's okay. Oh, uh, that was all free combat. I should have attacked first. All right, whatever. Whoops, missed three damage. Okay, if they have a Brazen Borrower or a Dead Gone or an Ottawa or anything here. Yeah, Fury certainly does it too. Okay, okay. I jacked that game up. I could have, we could have been in the same spot with me at 11 instead of 3 because I took two hits from that Rhino that I didn't need to. Whoops. Okay, Negate, Chalice of the Void, Engineered Explosives, all good stuff. Back to Nature, Run a Foul. We're not here for any of that. These five come in. Lightning Bolt's not great in this matchup. Bolt. And I don't mind Zuranorb at all. 
Haywire might not really for this matchup. They might try to Blood Moon me, but I've got basics. I guess not that many, though. High rate Spell Bomb. That card is not good here. Oh, Soul Guide Lantern might be even worse. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. I'll keep this hand. Okay, they mold a six, and they have a Gemstone Cavern. That's four cards in their actual hand to play the game with. I'm going to play Ketria Triome and Chalice on zero. I'm just going to send this now. It doesn't matter for another turn, but that's a turn that they could draw a Force of Vigor to deal with it. Or a Force of Negation to counter it on the, on the top. Force of Vigor, they could get whatever. Yo, old ravioli here. Do I want to dash this or just put it into play? I could play Ragavan and Shadow Spear here. Yeah, I am going to do that. We're settling in for a longer game here, and I would like resources to express a iteration with. And this just dies to fire, but dashing it doesn't change that. The only thing that changes is I don't have Shadow Spear in play. Uh-oh. They look they appear to be setting up Blood Moon, but Ragavan solves that problem too. If they go Blood Moon plus Fury here, I'm actually pretty bummed about it. Yeah, I did successfully untap. And I'm just gonna go to combat here before playing my land. If they have a tide binder, I can unholy heat it. Or endurance trades here. All right, not exciting, but it's fine. Got it out of the hand. The endurance blocks. And then what's the best sequence here? I kind of want basic forest, but I also really don't want basic forest at all. Basic mountain doesn't matter versus blood moon, which is the thing I'm worried about at this time. I could also just not own holy heat and play Tarmogoyf. That sounds bad, though. I'm going to unholy heat and then play Tarmogoyf. And I got to fetch a steam vents to do this. I think that rounds out my colors the best. All right, I've got a 3-4. That can become a 4-5, even if they Blood Moon me. Oh no, I'm getting Flame of Anord. Oh no, it is Blood Moon. Sure. They have another basic island. Ragavan's my best draw at this point. Okay, a little awkward mana situation there, but we are, we are pushing. 4-5 is bigger than Fury, bigger than Rhinos, and they need to answer my Chalice before they can Rhino. So they can hard cast Fury here. Alright, they're just putting Shardless Agent into play with no Cascade. They do have Force of Vigor in the deck, revealed off the Cascade. It's a pretty desperate play, though. Oh, look at me with my basic forest suddenly. Also Tarmogoyf bigger suddenly. The technology is real. Bang. That was sweet. Expedition map was not on my radar as an out there. They suspended a Crashing Footfalls. They must be trying to set up a double block here, which they can't even cast Endurance because of their own Blood Moon. They're just chump blocking, and they can Flame of Anor, I guess. Please don't have that. Okay, they didn't have that. I mean, Flame kills this anytime because they could kill the Shadow Spear and deal 5 to the Goyf. Urza Saga straight to the graveyard. Bang. 6-7, now lethal. So they have to ice it just to be alive. Sick. All right. They're treading water over there. They're crashing footfalls, ticks down again. Two turns from now, it will be countered by Chalice. Two cards in their hand. They can cast a Fury that doesn't even successfully block Tarmogoyf and trade with it. They put four on this thing. Tarmogoyf's so big. It's outrageously large. Attack. Trample you for three. Don't lose my creature. Opponent's at three. Running out of draw steps over there. Oh, yeah. Coast to coast with the Tarmogoyf, like it's 2009. Okay, uh, back to Naster does destroy Blood Moon. Do I care? I have two Basajus in my deck. I have basic lands in my deck. I have Ragavan in my deck. I just don't think I'm worried about that. Not to the point where I'm going to bring in something as fringe as back to nature. Yeah, Haywire Mites in my deck as well. Uh, we're, we're good here. Not worried about it. Let's go. Ren and six. Uh, I'm not able to fetch basic forest with this hand, which is a bummer, but I can turn one Ragavan. Traverse the Olven Wald. And Ragavan's in there. Ketria Trium in the end step. I'm not getting deaded. Not yet. Okay. I'm not getting fired. Might get deaded. Just gonna attack before anything else happens. I'd like to know if I have a Ragavan or not before I make more decisions. Nice. We're in there. Flip the Lorian revealed. And I could express a iteration off the treasure, see what happens with that. 
if I just like spike a chalice, it is three looks at that. I can also just keep my untouchable mana up and start Renin Sixing. I think that's where I want to be. Do I want Breeding Pool? I think so. Breeding Pool casts EI next turn and Ren this turn. Pick up the Tarn. Okay, I mean, this might be too slow of a value engine versus the Rhinos that are likely coming next turn. But I gotta try. You know? Negate. Easy game. Always had it. I'm gonna play Scalding Tarn and I'm gonna attack with Ragavan and hope they don't have Force of Negation. Oh my god, a violent outburst. What a surprise. Rhinos, negate them with the card that was in my hand the whole time. Yeah! That's nice. Right, let's get another taste over there. Exile to Wooded Foothills. Not super exciting. I have made my land drop already, regrettably. I'm going to fetch for Ketria Triome. Or with Ren going, is that better in my deck? Yeah, that's probably better in my deck, actually. I'm going to get Stomping Ground tapped and then pick up my land. Okay, I can hardcast Fury next turn if they do put some Rhinos in. Gemstone Caverns right on time. Okay, now I'm slightly more worried because there's lots of stuff they could have here. Not even close to Delirium on this Traverse the Olvenwald. I could EI pre-combat and see if I come up with an issue for them. But if I do that, I can't Fury post-combat. All right, I'll just attack. Because even if they ambush this with a Subtlety or a Endurance, I could finish it off with Fury. Yeah, that's fine. This Ragavan's done a lot. And if this Fury gets... is just a one-for-one one and doesn't actually counter anything, that's great. Especially with the my own Fury in my hand. Okay, so I could Fury this, or I could just ping it with Ren. I think I want to EI and just see what happens, because I could pick this off at any time. Unholy Heat to my hand... Scalding Tarn to the bottom, exile Wooded Foothills. Play Wooded Foothills. Deal one to Subtlety. And now if I fetch, that's four card types, and I can start traversing for, for bangers. Grab my forest. Traverse the Aldenwald. Traverse it. What's going on in there? I could grab Titania. She's pretty big next turn. Or I could play Tarmogoyf right now. Well, this is fun. I have so many choices. I think I just want this Goyf. It's large and in charge. I'm not worried about Blood Moon at all. And I can pass the turn. If they had more Rhinos, that would have been a way better play last turn than Subtlety. I think I'm good there. Another EI. Does Endurance kill Tarmogoyf right now? My opponent has two in or Sorcery Instant Land and Subtlety. So Goyf is 4-5 from each graveyard right now. Or I... We both have all the same card types, so Endurance targeting anyone doesn't kill Tarmogoyf. Okay, good. In that case, I will just start by going to combat. Okay, did they find some Rhinos? Oh, they're going to bounce my Tarmogoyf. Nice. Spending three mana to not even answer a two mana card is just exactly where you want to put the tempo deck. And I'm going to EI here. Just keep it flowing. Ooh, I can EI again, or just play the Steam Vents. I don't think I need this Unholy Heat. Yeah, I'm going to put EI in my hand, Unholy Heat to the bottom, Exile Steam Vents, and then I'll play Vents Tapped and redeploy Tarmogoyf. Not the highest velocity play I could have made, but I think it's solid. And pick up my Wooded Foothills and then discard a Scalding Tarn. I think they're the same at this point because my basic force is in play, but Wooded Foothills is a slightly better fetch in the deck overall. So I might have just given my opponent a piece of information for free. Okay, now they're playing around a gate, a card that I play exactly one copy of that I've already used. Main phase violent outburst. You did it. And they suspended another footfalls. Okay. I feel like we're actually doing fine here. Unholy Heat does get blown out by Endurance, but I think I'm okay with that. If, they co if it costs them two cards to save half of a Rhino, it's not a big deal to me. And I do have a basic mountain still in the deck that I could get here and cast Fury. Like my creature's just bigger than theirs. Same thing, if they subtlety this, I don't care. Ren can pick up a land, and then I bash for four. It's way ahead on every important metric here. And I'm at the point where I can tutor Titania, play her, and immediately, twice, putting two five threes into play. 
They've pitch cast a fury, killing my fury and dealing one to rent. Sure. That was a three for one all day, every day. Fury already killed something on the way in, and they spent two cards to not make anything. Ooh, Ragavan. I like dashing this here. If it connects, then I can still Titania, and if it doesn't connect, then that answer probably would have answered Titania as well. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going for it. Big Titania. It's your time, girl. Get in here. Boom. I think I'm supposed to make my land drop first. Sick. Fetch. Get a 5-3. Get a Triome. I'm actually out of fetchables here, but that's okay. Okay, they're dead to three different permanents that I have. These rhinos still two turns away, the ones that are on suspend. Oh no, I've been blood mooned. I'll make a 5-3 in response. Fail to find. But did I fail? Or did I just not want? Okay, Blood Moon's in play. They're dead too. A thousand different things. Force of Vigor targeting Blood Moon. <laughs> Sick one. All right. They're goofing, and I appreciate it. Okay, a uh, pretty clean win over Rhinos, and the game that they got was because I punted and forgot to play around a new card. So that's a nice matchup to feel okay in. Let's roll. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks. And groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the play in round number two with a turn one Ragavan, followed by a backup Ragavan if they deal with that one. I'm going for it. There are not many formats you can do this anymore, and I'm going to do it when it's available to me. Traverse does not get blue mana in the deck. Uh, blue is a splash color. Unholy heat in the main phase. Now I have to decide if I want to dash this rag or deploy it normal. I think I want to dash it. I just make sure it hits. Make sure something happens here. Make them deal with it for the rest of the game. We're in there. We flipped a Dragon's Rage Channeler. Don't mind if I do. Card that is not in my deck, but could be. It always feels like cheating when Ragvan actually draws, just straight up rips a card. And they had to Unholy Heat that. They're a deck that plays a lot of Unholy Heat effects. I'm not going to assume that they... Oh, well, I just drew the, the card that I would have traversed for here. I guess I will dash Ragavan again. How many Unholy Heats are in your hand? The answer is at least three. Okay, it's gone. They did it. It's handled. I can traverse just to guarantee my next land drop now, and that also builds card types for Delirium. I am going to grab a mountain right now while I can. And they are gassed up for a, a Murktide Regent here, who is 6-6. Six, six. Can't quite beat it yet. Fetch gets me three card types. I can Bolt plus... Yeah, I can Bolt plus Unholy Heat this thing. Because Bolt will be my fourth card type. Fetch for Steam Vents. Be the blue. Lightning Bolt, Unholy Heat, two for ones don't feel good, but feels better than dying to Murktide Regent. Oh, if I bolted them, shit. This does six. I, I, they could be a 10 right now. It would have been the same. Whoops. A little sloppy with these modern cards. Uh, they've got a Ragavan. Not interested in dashing it. Ren and six. That's a good draw. Yeah, I mean, just killing Ragavan here seems dope. Saving the Fury for later. In losing Ren and six to a Lightning Bolt never feels great. But this is a nice, clean exchange that I'm pretty happy with. Yeah, I'm bummed I missed that 3 damage. EI, okay. And they had to tap their fire alley to do it. They could be a 9. I'm just going to keep score here. They found an island. I could just start beating up their basic lands. Or, like, I could ghost quarter. I don't need to do it now. I could do all of this on my turn if I'm going to do it at all. Ooh, my own EI. That's nice. Okay. Uh, Blue-red. I'm going to save my ren activation. Not sure where I want to point that yet. 
Okay. Unholy Heat to my hand. Wooded Foothills to the bottom. Soul Guide Lantern in exile. That's a good one. Soul Guide Lantern. Hit the Expressive Iteration. That's the unique card type that they have. And I think I just want to start strip mining them. They'll run out of basics eventually. And they usually don't have a mountain, I think. That's how these decks are built. I think it's usually three islands, which we have now achieved. And I can kill a Merktide if they play it here, so I'm not going to Soul Guide. They do have it. Just a little 3-3. I might even just Fury this. Yeah, I think that's better than heating it. Ooh, I like that. I pick up the Ghost Quarter, play it, Hardcast Fury, unless they're main decking a Subtlety, which would be, I think, weird. That's dead. I've got a Fury. They don't have red mana. I'm going to start actually start mining them next turn. I don't think there's going to be four basics in this deck. Okay, attack first. Going to make them react to me. And they have no reaction. They're at six. And I'm just going to strip mine them out here. I'm not going to play the Titania into Counterspell. The only thing they can even do here is Counterspell. Just grind you into goop. Missed three damage this game. Didn't actually miss it. <laughs> Didn't even need it. Ooh, they found red. If they lightning bolt this fury, they're back in it. Wow, look at you. What a legend. I'm going to draw a card with Soul Guide Lantern. I don't think I care about their graveyard at this point. They're just not even going to cast spells in the near future. Saga is good. Not as good as Ghost Quarter. Take you off red again. And I think I do want to EI here. If I hit a Tarmogoy for a traverse the Ulvenwald, I have a lot of castable spells here. Force a negation pitching counter spell. They're clinging to life here. I appreciate their their gumption. Cool. They tapped out. All right. I missed three damage, but we got away with it. Run a foul, certainly, for this matchup. Tired of bonus X creature with flying. Unlicensed hearse. They do care about their graveyard. I don't think I want to Chalice of the Void this deck. I might want to engineer explosives it. It's like I have so many ones in the deck. EE's a maybe. And then. Run a foul and license hers are definitely. What is less good here? Haywire might. Again, this is a deck that might blood moon me. Soul Guide Lantern's actually good here. All my spell bombs actually look great. Endurance is good. Brazen Bar is good. All the, the tutor bullets are fine. Uh oh, I just like every card. I don't have room for engineered explosives. Do I have two cuts for the hearse and the run afoul? Maybe Pyrite Spell Bomb is just worse than run afoul. And killing Ragavan matters, but. Killing Merktide probably matters more, and I have a million other ways to kill Ragavan. I don't really want to cut a Ren in 6. It's kind of what I'm looking at. I could cut a Saga in case they do Moon me. But I have my answers to Moon in. I'm not worried about that too much. They also didn't see Saga in game 1, which is really important. They might not know that they're sideboarding against a Saga deck. But they did see main deck Soul Guide Lantern, which kind of gives it away if they're really paying attention. Maybe I cut a Ragavan on the draw and just try to do something different. Okay, uh, Traverse the Earth Ulvenwald is my second land. I'm going to keep this. Okay, I'm really glad that was not Ragavan. So I have to fetch a green source with this, which means that I probably want to get Breeding Pool and then grab the basic mountain. I would rather do it the other way, but Traverse the Ulvenwald is a... I guess if I'm not worried about finding blue right away, because I do have two Ren and Sixes. Like, I'd rather have the forest in my hand than the mountain for Blood Moon concerns. But I have to ignore Blood Moon if I want all three of my colors. I don't think I need all three of my colors. So having access to multiple red to Unholy Heat something and play Ragavan, Reading Pool doesn't solve that problem either. Okay, Stomping Ground. And then Traverse. Am I going to play around Blood Moon here? I have to make a choice. Alright, I'll get the Forest. Kind of disappointed giving up on Double Red. But I'm a three-color deck. What do you want from me? Can't do everything. They've got a Bobble and a Fetch Land. That's at least two for Delirium. They like their top card. Hate that for me. Preordain. That's three for Delirium. And top bottom, they put that card that we knew about in the hand. Bobbled themselves to decide if they like that card. Decided they don't. Zapped in steam vents. Okay. They draw their card. 
I'm in a little bit of a tricky spot here because if I unholy heat and they cast any instant, even if they just bolt me, my unholy heat doesn't work. I'm gonna go for the Ren here. Oh, am I getting spell snared? Spell pierce. Okay, sure. Fair enough. I got more where that came from. I'll just pass the turn. Endurance can knock this delirium off if I need to do that at some point. A 13 already. Life total dropping fast. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That's messed up. Okay, Urza Saga is available to me now. I don't think that's even my play, though. I could Saga, then just main phase Endurance. And Saga's moving up, but I don't think Saga is that helpful here. The alternative is Ren and Six, plus get back Scalding Tarn, Unholy Heat, the Goblin Shaman. Yeah, I think that's fine. We did see Force of Negation game one. Glad they didn't have it there. Fetch for Mountain, Unholy Heat, the Shaman right now. Fable Trigger. They discarded Preordain and EI. Wow, they're trying to get this game over. They're attacking Ren and Six, though. I'm glad for that. And they're passing. Okay. Cool. Plus target Scalding Tarn, then play Urza Saga. And I'm just going to cast Ragavan. This is all a distraction. If I could get a counterspell out of their hand and let Endurance resolve, I'll be pretty stoked about it. Fetching in the end step. Steam Vents tapped. I'm going to let them go into combat. I need things to go right here. If they have counterspell for Endurance, they have counterspell. Oh, maybe here is actually a spot where I need to interact. They mailed a Rag. All right, I'll interact now before they see three more looks at Counterspell. They had one anyway. All good. That hopefully makes their EI at least a little awkward. Exile Flooded Strand, so they did find the land all the same. DRC has to fight. Ren and Six, draw two cards, gain six life. Exactly what I need in this matchup. Soul Guide Lantern's not bad. I'm going to offer the trade with Rag here, rather than try to cantrip into an answer. Yeah, I don't think they would trade this off. Come on, Lightning Bolt. Exile to land, disappointing. I can EI off the treasure. Keep my options open here. Expedition map, mountain, Ren and six. These are all pretty bad. I'll put map in my hand. Or Ren in my hand. Mountain to the bottom, exile map. Play another saga. I could just burn off the map and play the Soul Guide Lantern. I think that's where I need to be. This is just so much more important. They have five card types. I can't take them off anything here. Yeah, maybe in that case, if I wasn't actually going to cast the spell, I'm supposed to just burn off the Ren because I have two of them. Or take the land and not burn off anything. This active reflection is terrifying. If they have a Fury, I'm just dead. Okay, they're making another DRC. Those have to attack. I'm going to make a construct. Just a little 2-2. And then I'm going to bomb their graveyard. If they have spells before, blocks. Okay, I'll block the actual DRC. Wow, that went weird, weirdly well. I was expecting just like a flurry of lightning bolts and unholy heats and just get delirium again instantaneously. All right, cool. Reordain, milling spell snare. Confirmed, this is in the deck. Top bottom. Blood moon. All right, well, that's going to kill two of my lands outright. Disappointing. Okay. They've got a Fable, an Active Reflection, and two cards in hand versus me doing... Well, there's that. Maybe a little late, but there it is. Can I connect here? Okay. They didn't find a removal spell. Can I find a banger? My own Fable. Don't mind if I do. Okay. Uh, Scalding Tarn. Fable. Force of Negation. All right, yeah, they went Hellbent to deal with that one. And then, uh, do I think Haywire Might or Ren is better here? I mean, Ren does more the longer it's in play. I'm going to go with that. I can put Saga in my hand. I can't play it right now. Both because I made a land drop and because Blood Moon's in play. All right, so they're in full top deck mode. I have stuff going on, but they do have an insanely powerful permanent in play. I could double tap this reflection, like minus Ren, cast another Ren minus. That might be worse than just getting Sagas going, though. I think I offer the trade. If I could clear this thing out of the way and then clear the Blood Moon. Okay. Suddenly, like my position, Haywire might. Please don't have Counterspell. No! Disappointing. All right. Well, that blew out that situation. But I have Planeswalker ticking up, and they don't. 
uh, don't do stuff. That was a really good thing to have. Now I feel like I'm behind. They found another Fable. Jeez. Yeah, this card's very good. The Seiju, I think, is my best draw now. The Seiju. <laughs> Alright, kill the Blood Moon. And then pick up the Seiju. And play Saga. And kill your Fable. Alright, they have millions of mana now. But I did draw the best card in my deck. My Sagas are unlocked. Let's do it. They just failed to find. Or at least declined to search. Dashing Rag, okay. Please don't hit any of my good cards. Four damage here. Flip a land? Flip a land? A lightning bolt. Okay, I mean, that doesn't kill anything. It does put me to dead on board. Which is an important thing to kill, I guess. Do I fetch myself into bolt range? Can I survive being in bolt range anyway? I think I lose the lightning bolt anyway, so I'll just fetch. Get the Ketria Triome. Unlicensed Hearse. That card is medium fine, I guess. Renin 6 plus target Basaju. An unlicensed Hearse. I'll play this. And I guess I just pass the turn and hope I don't die here. If they can find one damage anywhere, I lose. If I can ultimate Ren and then fling a bunch of bolts at them, that's good. Yeah, if they have Unholy Heat, that can kill my Construct token. That's good enough. Okay, can I go to blocks? I can go to blocks. I've blocked Ragavan. Something's happening. Ottawara. Why didn't this happen before blocks? Now, instead of being dead, I'm simply not dead. Okay. I mean, we're on borrowed time now. Uh, this game should have been over here. But instead, we're still playing. Unlicensed Hearse, Exile, some spells... I'm going to start going after instance. And now I got some tricks available. That was a big turn to make a mistake on for my opponent. Make a construct. Tutor Shadow Spear. Or no, Zuran Orb. Yeah, Zuran Orb, Zuran Orb. For sure. I could get Shadow Spear next turn. Just make sure I don't die first. And play another Saga. Keep that coming. And do I just emblem this Ren or do I try to keep going? I think I'm pretty stable here that I could just plus grab this Urza Saga back up. Okay, I feel stable. We'll see what happens, but this feels like a winning position to me. They would need an enormous number of lightning bolts to overcome Zuran Orb. Dragon's Rage Channeler, who I can manipulate with my hearse. Okay, end step. Make a construct. Exile some more instants. Spell snare. Uh, that's actually all the instants. And start getting sorceries. Four card types left over there. Saga's trigger. I'm going to make a construct and then sacrifice this one before it sacrifices to its own ability. That's just free money. And I get to tutor Shadow Spear. And plus Ren. Yeah, this Zuran Orb just has the blocked. Cool. All right. Uh, they messed up with this auto aura that they just passed priority one time too many. With perfect play, we would have lost this match, but lots of cool little decisions. Another long, grindy 30-minute match. Love to see it. Let's go. If you're looking to run a CEDH or 1v1 tournament, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With Command Tower's intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle deckless submission and player management with just a few clicks. Players just need to scan the event's QR code for access to the full tournament bracket, including seamless pairings and real-time standing updates. Take the guesswork out of tournament organizing. Try Command Tower for your next event. I'm on the draw against an opponent named Amulet Go. Do you think they're telling the truth? Because I have Poseidon and Haywire Might in my hand. I'm going to keep. Okay. <laughs> they were not lying. Good to know there's still some honesty in this world. Okay, how do I want to play this? I can just jam my Haywire Might into play here. Yeah, I don't think leaving up Lightning Bolt or in Holy Heat is helpful. All right, I'll play the Might. I hate to show this to them, but they're on the play. I tried. Let's see if we just get turn two here. Three mana in the pool. They can play a Dryad and then play another land. Yep, there's that. Slayer Stronghold is their backup land. Okay. Now I have kind of an interesting choice. I can delete the amulet. I could delete the saga. Or I could 
attack into the Dryad and then bolt it. I can also just hold up a Seiju, but then they're going to untap with two amulets. Do I think that the Dryad or the second amulet is more important here? I guess is the question. I'm going to attack and see if they block. Okay, no block. They do like the Dryad. I could just pass with both of my abilities available. But two amulets, I mean, they get the prime time no matter what here. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, I'll be one short. Shit. I can have a land, artifact, and creature in my graveyard. I think I'm supposed to hit the Saga here. I'm going to get a breeding pool. Okay, exile Urza Saga. This is like exiling an amulet, except they also don't get to float one. Sucks I'm one card type short here of Unholy Heat and just taking the wind out of their entire sails. Mycosynth Gardens. Okay. I mean, they still have a land drop. They can make another amulet and they can get four mana here off the growth chamber we know about. One, two, three, four. Okay, where's this going? A second dryad brings them up to five mana. Arboreal Grazer. Okay, they have six mana. Or they actually have seven, but shit. Ah, oh, disappointing. Yep, now they can do whatever. Another Arboreal Grazer. Oh, one card left in your hand. I have to assume it's the prime time if you're still doing this. But the Slayer's Stronghold is in play and tapped. Okay, it is Primeval Titan. And let's see what this brings. Because they are on low resources here. Amulet has a way of just killing you, even when you think you might be doing okay. You're never actually doing okay. Okay, so this is uh, another 6 mana. They can play another prime time here. Yeah, they'll have enough in the pool to transmute this to Larry West for the... Yeah, they can transmute for the Pact and then get Cultivator Colossus or Primeval Titan here. Primeval Titan it is. Yeah, I win this game on the play, which is kind of crazy considering they're just going completely nuts on turn 3 even through a removal spell on an amulet. Okay, they, there's the line. The, they copy the Slayer Stronghold and... Okay. Disappointing. <laughs> That was sweet. What is good here? Torpor Orb, certainly. Indigate has some interactive qualities. Alpine Moon seems solid. I think Needle can name Slayer Stronghold. I don't think I want to back to nature. Craft Digger Sage, whatever. Yeah, I think it's these five, and I'm looking at Lightning Bolt as not being good enough. Soul Guide Lantern doesn't matter. Zern Orb probably doesn't matter. High right spell bomb probably doesn't matter. We do have a bunch of mediocre things for this matchup. I think pirate spell bomb is probably worse than lightning bolt. Yeah, Soul Guide Lantern just really doesn't do anything. And Zurin Orb can do the Titania pop, where you Titania and then just put X five threes into play and gain two X life, where X is your lands. Maybe that can win a race. Okay, that was a close one. Explosives on one could clear out some amulets, I guess, if I think that's better than Lightning Bolt and Zurin Orb still. I think I do think that. Okay. Engineered Explosives are in. Okay. Keep. I'm going to fetch Steam Vents and play Ragavan on turn one, and then I hope they play an Urza Saga that I can just obliterate. Here's the Rag. Pass the turn. Saga. We did it. Oh, they're dismembering. Okay. That was a pretty good one. However, I've got better stuff going on than that. I could play Ren and Six this turn. Yeah, I think this is actually better. The Saga doesn't matter until next turn anyway. And just getting the Planeswalker in, draw the card, hit the land drop. I can hold up Negate on my Alpine Moon turn. Oh, that's big. They think they're going to have two amulets next turn, but they will actually have zero. Wooded Foothills, play the Alpine Moon. Urza's Saga. Shadow Realm, that thing. And I'm going to grab a Stomping Ground now. I think it's better to put Goyf into play and start attacking now that that went off without a hitch, then hold up Negate. Counter spells are always better when you have a creature in play. Forest Gardens. Razor. Dropped in Growth Chamber. Picked up the Forest. Okay. Pretty medium stuff all around over there. Other Goyf. Just going to attack first. I suspected a block there. Casting EI first would have made Goyf bigger. I can also just play a second Goyf here and hold him to gate. That's probably the place to be. 
get breeding pool, shock it in, giving away all my secrets here that I have a counter spell. Rule turf with a mana floating. Dryad can't negate that. And that's a different forest than we saw before. So they have Mycosynth Gardens and a forest in their hand. A Raisin B. Okay. This does a ton of damage right away. I would like to get Delirium this turn. How do I do that? I think it starts with EI. Red, blue. Oh, Torpor Orb, what's up? How do I want to do this? I can play one of these and hide the other in my hand. I don't need the land. Okay, I think I want explosives in my hand. Mountain on the bottom, exile Torpor Orb. Then play Wooded Foothills. Fetch for Mountain. Play Torpor Orb now. Tap for 10. And I'm actually going to plus Ren. Targeting nothing. Because if they destroy my Alpine Moon or my Torpor Orb, I want Delirium. And if they just go like land Primeval Titan here, I don't care. Explosives, X equals 2. Okay, uh, this is what we played towards. This does stabilize their entire board. But it also gives me Delirium. Sheesh, that is like my whole shit. Okay, if they cast Primetime next turn, how bad is that for me? I mean, like the worst, right? I could just light this up now. But I think I'd rather deal with that another way. There's a saga I'm pretty happy to see. And I can, one, two, three, one, two. I can kill Dryad and Unholy Heat of Primetime. All right, Rug Mana here for three. Just kill this thing now. I can kill a Primeval Titan, but it will get a trigger. I have Saga going up, though. The One Ring. Great. Me with my Negate tapped out. This is a card they're allowed to play, unfortunately. Selesnia Sanctuary picked up Forest. We're pretty sure there's two Forests in their hand right now. Traverse the Alvenwald. Okay. This is whatever I want it to be. What do I want it to be? Uh, I wish Questing Beast was in my deck right now. They would just die. Game 3, I'll play it. Forgot this is a, a card they can have. I can also 1-2 activate Saga, negate or Brazen Borrow, and on Holy Heat. I think I just passed the turn, because the ring's going to deal one to them. I am presenting lethal here with multiple ways to interact. I think this is how I need to win this game. They draw two from the ring. They can use gardens to copy the ring, and then legend rule the one with two on it. They don't get protection from everything, but they can clear the, the shock in their next upkeep. And then negate this one. Yeah, if they're just trying to string rings together, that's probably good for me. Or they, or they just have three of them. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that is reset. And they have Arboreal Grazer, who can block Brazen Borrower. Valakut is here. Drawn a card with their ring. Construct Token. Ragavan. Construct Token. And Shadow Spear removes Hexproof and Indestructible. Does not remove protection. I can at least Pithing Needle the One Ring. And then I can Traverse for another Saga. And then that still leaves up all my interaction. Traverse for Urza Saga. Maybe that should have been Beseju. But I do have interaction in my hand already, and they're dying quick. Okay, they're at four. Three rings are already accounted for, and they can't activate the one they have. There's no Amulets to be spoken of either. I have Unholy Heat and Brazen Borrower that can interact with a Dryad of the Elysian Grove that would turn on Valakut. Besejoing my Needle... Okay. That's fair, I guess. Stomping Ground comes into play tapped, and they get to draw some cards. Summoner's Pact. It's party time. wonder if they have like a Hornet Queen or some weird tech to make sure they don't die around the edges here. It's just prime time. Uh-oh. But something's happening with these Mycosynth Gardens. Okay, they filtered red-white into the Mycosynth Gardens. So they're going to get the Slayer Stronghold to bounce it and then try to play it and give primetime haste. Because they're doing this without amulets. They got Kabira Crossroads and Boros Garrison. Okay, so they do have the ability to gain two life, which is not enough to save them here. But if they replay that Kabira Crossroads, they're at eight. That's still not enough to save them. Did they have the Stronghold in their hand? Why did we float red-white? Okay. okay. End of turn. Unholy Heat, the primetime. And bounce the grazer. 
And then between making construct, dashing, rag of and this is plenty. Making constructs, dashing, rag, this is eight plus the damage the ring will deal to them. Okay, cool, we did it. Oof. All right, questing beast, you're in. Forgot this was a ring deck. And engineered explosives might be a little mid. I like all these other things in the toolbox. The Alpine Moon won me that game. Running it. Uh, this hand is pretty mediocre. I do like turn one Ragavan. I have Negate, but I'm not going to get Delirium. I'm going to try it. This might be a hand that I'm supposed to mulligan more aggressively. Endurance. That card, inexplicably still in my deck. I gotta get Steam Vince here. Okay, Rag, let's hope you do cool stuff this game. No Grazer. Blue in the pool. Engineer Explosives for one. Okay. That's a later problem. And they can copy my Steam Vents here. That's mediocre. Okay, attacking with Rag. Let's hope we get something cool. We exiled their Sun Home. Okay. That is a one of that is relevant to their combo a little bit. And I guess I just play Urza Saga here. Yep, for sure. They're just busting their explosives right away. Not messing around with the rag at all. They're going to pick up... They got their Teleria West back there. And another Saga. Do I want to get that going? I don't think I'm ready for that. I'm going to play Forest and Pass. Hey, this is the turn where I need to not be dead somehow. Spelunking. This is probably getting negated. When this enters the battlefield, draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand out of the battlefield. If you put a cave in this way, you gain four. Lands you control enter untapped. Uh, no. Okay, that then gives me four card types for the unholy heat. Once this saga pops, I am going to make a construct. And I could grab Haywire Might here and just be ahead of a amulet. What does Traverse do here? I could just slam it. I could get the other Saga ticking up and use Treasure as my Unholy Heat if I need that. Yeah, I think Saga going forward is, is the best way to actually win this game. So look, Transmuting Teleria West. Getting a Summoner's Pact, which they cannot cast now or they die. Or I guess they... Nope. Okay, they can cast it now, but they're going to save it for next turn. Picking up their Vesuva. Reasonable decision. And I draw for turn. It's another land. I'm going to shove in Stomping Ground here. And I think I just try to... I'm going to check for Traverse. What does Traverse do? Nothing really. Oh, I could get Beseju. I could Traverse for Beseju. That's actually sick. So if I Traverse for Beseju, I can activate it, killing a Simic Growth Chamber. And then they may or may not be able to do what they want to do next turn. Okay, I am doing that. Get Beseju, blow up a growth chamber, or I should probably attack first. Attack first, and hopefully they have less mana than they thought they would going into this next turn, and I can still Unholy Heat or Haywire Might, or I can do both. I can Unholy Heat and Haywire Might. Their own Saga. Haywire Might can delete that if I wanted to. They have five mana right now. There's the one ring, okay. I can tutor a Pithing Needle next turn. But they are safe for this turn cycle. I'm really confident I'm more interested in attacking the Saga than the Ring here. Make the Construct. You draw a card. That's fine. Get the Construct. Get the Needle. Name the One Ring. Play my land. And Haywire Might the Saga. And then pass the turn here. Now that the Might's out of the way, they can start dropping Amulets. The Seiju, my Needle. Okay. We've seen this before. That works. I'm going to get a Stomping Ground. And they draw two. Play to Valakut. Okay. I'm going to fetch in the end step, get the Breeding Pool. Okay, deck. What do we got here? Ragavan, I don't hate. Dash, Ragavan. Let's put some extra damage on here. In for eight. And I flipped a Summoner's Pact. What can I do with that? Uh, I mean, I have Questing Beast in my deck. I have Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I'm not actually going to use that. That just seems super risky for no reason. They are dead on board, and they have to get through an unholy heat. I'll just... I'll take that as enough. At three. 
I actually considered last turn getting the Stomping Ground untapped and shoving Endurance just for extra damage, and now they're at 3, and I kind of wish I did that, but it would have cost me my treasure, so... Okay. They have another ring. It's time for the Questing Beast to show up and just do the damn thing. That's what I need here. Vesuva is another Valakut. Okay. They're making it clear that they would like to light me up with Valakut. A fetch in the end step. I would like to maximize my hits here on the Questing Beast. They have to discard some cards to hand size. And traverse the Olven Wald. Pew, 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 pew. Sideboard technology. Let it rip, big guy. ka -chow. They're going to have to answer this somehow. Damage cannot be prevented when this attacks. And they're dead. Okay. Adjusted to game two to a card that I didn't see game one, and then we won a game with that adjustment in game three. That's how magic works. And we remain undefeated. Let's keep going. Another 30-minute game. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. On the draw for round four, with another turn one, Ragavan, I'm going to keep opponent Malt 6 and have a Blooming Marsh, so Yogmoth, Yogmoth, guaranteed. Ragman's not that good against Yogmoth. Overall, I'm going to fetch a Basic Mountain and Lightning Bolt this Halfling. I am using Lightning Bolt because Unholy Heat kills actual Yogmoth, which is going to be a problem later. And Grist functionally comes in on 4 loyalty. So did we stabilize or do they have a Wall of Roots and just continue disrespecting me? Okay, they did not make a play here. Ooh, EI, cool. That means I'm fetching Breeding Pool here. And I am going to dash the rag. Breeding Pool, Dash, the Ravioli, and Orcish Bowmaster, correct. That is a two-mana play that can be made in this format. Whoops. All right. Obliterated there. It's fine. That Ragavan was never getting through there. The Ragavan is pretty bad against Yogg. They have so many mana dorks and then stuff like Orcish Bowmaster and Strangaroo Geist and just Grist, just shit you can never, ever beat. I got the Soul Cauldron and Delighted Halfling. And... They're eating a halfling to make something bigger. Probably their bowmaster. Okay. And I'm taking three. Expedition map. Not what I'm looking for. I'm going to EI here. This will give me delirium. And I can put Urza Saga in my hand. Ghost quarter on the bottom. Exile Unholy Heat. Fetch another basic. Yeah, I do have to be careful with my life total here. And heat the... Bowmaster. And I have another Heat in my hand. I wouldn't have killed that Bowmaster if I didn't have another answer to Yogg ready. And the Orc army does know how to tap for any color because there's a Delighted Halfling under the Soul Cauldron. Just deeply fucked. There's the Yogg. Uh, kind of. There it is. Alright, took a moment for the, the Ark to show up here. Attacking me for one. And killing Yogg is not as good as I would like. Because... The Soul Cauldron. Uh, okay, so here's the plan. Traverse for Baseju. Baseju the Soul Cauldron. Kill the Yogg. Or kill Yogg now. Traverse for Fury. Kill everything next turn. That's interesting. They're down to one card in hand. Oh, but if I play the Saga... Alright, what's, what's actually in my deck? There's the one Fury, the one Endurance. Endurance is not textless here. It's not great, though. Yeah, I'm just doing so little here. If the... Okay, I think I do need to answer the Yogg and all of its pieces. Reverse the Olvenwald. Get Baseju. Or Haywire Might. Nope. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's all the same shit. Haywire Might gains me to life along the way. Yeah, I'm gonna get Baseju. And then Baseju, the Agatha Soul Cauldron. This is also important to get off the table because it is graveyard hate. And like right now, if they take this creature, I lose delirium. So I have to kill the Yogg right now in response. Yeah, them taking me off delirium with regularity is also not acceptable. Okay, uh, they're going to have three power in play 
and I'm about to ramp them. They have one card in hand, plus what they're about to draw for turn. We got Dryad Arbor. That is a cool, techy little land. Maybe I'll just draw my Fury. Oh no! Another one of these. Okay, well, now their whole board is Yogs. That sucks. I could tutor from my other Baseju, but now I'm just so far behind on damage beats that it just doesn't even matter. Oh good, their last card in hand is a relevant one. Court of Calling. They get a young wolf here, they could start doing stuff. Yeah, they can just sack that to draw a card. It comes back with all the abilities of Yogg. And they deleted their Dryad Arbor to go again. And maybe if they get too aggressive here, they'll... Alright, they thought sees my Expedition map. Cool. Alright, I mean, as far as horrible turns that I could have just had, that was not the worst. Fury? 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 Draw Fury? I don't hate Brazen Borrower. Okay. Uh, Brazen Borrower is going to immediately bounce the Agatha Soul Cauldron, which will take the Yogg out from under it, and all of these will not have that ability anymore. So they have to decide right now if they want to lose some creatures to draw some cards. And they've lost their Orc army. The Young Wolf is a freebie here. And they sacked the Halfling, and now the Young Wolf is just a Young Wolf. Okay. Uh, well. They did draw, like, seven cards in the last turn cycle, but I at least broke up that engine temporarily. There's Colony Garden. Sweet technology. I played Jog earlier this week on the channel, and the Colony Garden was pretty dope. Young Wolf, Young Wolf. We know there's a Soul Cauldron in the hand. There's that. There are currently no good activated abilities in the graveyards, though. Just Delighted Halfling and Dried Arbor are the two. And they're just trying to take me off Delirium. Okay. Alrighty. I write Spellbomb. Let's keep drawing relevant cards. It's what I need from the deck right now. That's a removal spell that also makes my constructs bigger. A-Wire Might. Disappointing. They are blowing up my Saga here. I'll make the 2-2 on the way out. Pendle Haven. That makes their creatures bigger than mine. Yeah, I just like can't even block if they attack with two young wolves. Uh, If I block the Halfling... They can put a counter on it, and then I Pirate Spell Bomb it, and then I end up with a 1-1 Construct at the end of the exchange. Is that better than just keeping my Pirate Spell Bomb around? I don't think so. I'm gonna I'm just going to take a draw step and see if... Uh... Okay, they put stats on the plant token, and it also has the text of Haywire Might. Neat. I'm going to get the Steam Vents tapped here, and hope to draw Fury. Oh my goodness. All right. It's not Fury this turn, but it might be someday. Traverse the Olvenwald. Go get them. Oh no, I only have three card types. They've controlled my graveyard so well, and all my basics are in play. Oh no, I punted. Oh, if I literally activated Spellbomb. All right, shame concede. Shame concede. Whoops. Yeah, if I had activated Spellbomb first and then done that, I could have killed their plant token, found Fury, and then tried to stabilize next turn. That was embarrassing. Okay. Unlicensed Hearse coming in, Pinning Needle coming in, Graft Digger's Cage, Engineered Explosives in the maybe pile. And it sucks that Ragavan's bad in this matchup because I'm such a good Ragavan deck most of the time. Soul God Lantern, Shadow Spear. All of the, the tech pieces matter here. Torpor Orb. That's not really a thing they do. I like all my lands. I like all my bolts. I like Ren and Six. I like my big creatures, and I like all of my tech pieces. Where can I put this other engineered explosives? And they don't really attack my mana. I could probably live without the second basic mountain, but we did just get blown out by being run out of basics. Well, I got blown out by playing wrong, but completely failing to find was bad news. Yeah, I am going to cut a basic mountain, actually. Talking myself back into it. Let's go. Maybe negate's supposed to be in, but I feel like playing to the board is reasonable. I will keep my hand. 8-piece, 2-spot removal spells, and a Nerza Saga are exactly where I want to be here. I'm going to fetch for Steam Vents and play Graft Digger's Cage, and then pass. I don't need to do that right away, but I'm not doing anything else this turn. It's fine. I guess my Lightning Bolts could have curved out better if I had played that first. Because I could have bolted in the end step and then played Cage off Saga. Okay, yeah. I, I sequence this poorly. Because now if they play something boltable, I have to decide if I want to bolt it or activate my Saga. 
Zurin Orb, hello. Scalding Tarn, go in. Zurin Orb, go in. And passing the turn. Do they have a Force of Vigor? Do they have a... They have a Bowmaster, okay. I'm going to fetch in response, and I'll get the Mountain here. And they can have their Bowmaster. That is smaller than my Construct, even with the help of Pendlehaven. My deck does not draw cards at all. Risk the Hunger Tide, okay. And they've gotten an Insect out of that. I have to be aware that I can't actually tutor my Haywire Might here. I don't want it. I'm just saying. It's not an option with Graph Digger's Cage. Make a Construct, do the Zurin Orb trick. It's dying anyway. And I think I just want to Shadow Spear and go to town. Yeah, I'm just going to Shadow Spear, play Wooded Foothills, and attack Grist for five. Yeah, the jump block's fine. And I'll pass the turn. They may sacrifice a creature to destroy one of my creatures. That happens. Destroying my construct, it's dead. A Patra. When minus one counters go on stuff, they get a snake. Young wolf. Okay, that doesn't matter. A end step, fetch. Get stomping ground. And unholy heat kills Hepatra. It does not kill the Bowmaster Young Wolf because of Bendelhaven. Lightning Bolt kills anything. I think I just want to take out the Hepatra. And I'm saving the Unholy Heat for possible Yawgmoth in the future. My plan here is to equip Shadow Spear and attack Grist. And see if they want to like double block plus pump to keep Grist around. And even if they do all that, I can heat it. Nope, not interested. Reading pool tapped. And I don't have Delirium, importantly. Tapped land. And they're just getting in for some points here. If all they got here is poke for three, I'm just going to chill. All right, fatal push matters a lot. All right, that's dead now. I will just go to my turn. Cool, Saga. Reloading the threats. They have a land. They cannot fetch Dryad Arbor right now. And they're trying to pump their young wolf. I'm going to lightning bolt that, and it cannot come back because of Graf Digger's Cage. Stuffed. Okay, and now I'll have a 4-4 Construct with Unholy Heat back up. Might as well play my lands out. They don't do anything in my hand. And they represent life in play. Haha. <laughs> they fetched. Nothing came into play. They probably clicked Dryad Arbor, and it just... The game said no, sir. Shoulder the Apocalypse. Okay. Uh, I need to get Delirium, but I can't answer that. And my Constructs actually just... Pounce this thing, currently. This is why we sit on the Unholy Heat. Even if we have good targets for it, because there might be better ones later. Lightning Bolt can go, fi go face, Unholy Heat can kill Shouldered. The give and take of the world. EI, okay, that is Delirium. I lose two from Shouldered. And then I make a Construct, and I gain two life. And I tutor for, what do I want here? Can't get Haywire Might, can get Soul Guide Lantern. Their Graveyard's already under some control. I could get Expedition Map and just fire the next Saga in. I don't hate that. I am going to get Expedition Map, but then I'm going to cast EI, which will let me clear the Shouldered and then start bashing. Oh my goodness. What do I do with all this? Uh, I put Fury in my hand, Reverse on the bottom, Exile the Unholy Heat. And it's like I just found it. I do have Delirium. I counted this time. And now a 6-6 coming in against a Hellbent opponent. Sweet. I'm feeling good here. They would need something like destroy all artifacts effect to stabilize this. Yeah, okay, cool. Neat. The questing beast can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less. That is a lot of their deck. And they do have planeswalkers that I care about. Maybe I do want the questing beast in here. Zurin Orb was dope. I don't know if it's necessary, but it was dope. I think with the amount of removal I have, maybe the engineered explosives is going a little too deep here. Another Graph Digger's Cage Lightning Bolt start. I'll take it. Shaper Sanctuary. When a creature you control becomes target spell ability and opponent controls, you may draw a card. Well, that sucks. Tarmogoyf. Okay. Um, I can just play Graph Digger's Cage. The next turn, fetch Basic and play Goyf or play Ren and Six, depending on what they do. Wall of Roots. First appearance of that one in the game. And Haywire might. Disappointing. And they can even destroy my Graf Digger's Cage with Haywire Might 
using Wall of Roots mana, so like I can't even sneak a cheeky Ren and Six poke in here. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab my land and pass. Yeah, they're just doing it right now. Deleting my cage. Now I wish I had the engineered explosives in. The Shaper Sanctuary is a, a nasty one. Spike Feeder. Oh dear. They've got Spike Feeder combo in their deck too. Okay. Um, I can traverse to put a sorcery in my graveyard, but then that means I have to fetch a non-basic. I think I want to hold this traverse for the future. I'm just going to fetch a basic here. Pick up Wooded Foothills and play Tarmogoyf. I can Lightning Bolt something here. It just draws them a card. It's not like I can't do it. They don't have Hexproof. It's just card disadvantage. But if the option is facing down Infinite Life, then obviously we do it. Besiege you. Yeah, what's up? Okay. That rules. Tarmogoyf attack, please. And before damage, destroy Shaper's Sanctuary. Because that'll put an art of, or an enchantment in the graveyard as well. They have been kind of squeezed on mana. But I think unlocking my uh, removal is too good here. Plus Ren, pick up the Besiju. And play the Wood of Foothills. I am not going to tap out into this board. I don't know how easily they can go infinite with Spike Feeder. But I don't want it to be on the table. Orcish Bowmaster, hate that. All right, they're poking Ren. I can't just kill the feeder now. They can cord for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They can cord for x equals 2. Is that how spike feeder works? Ugh. All right, I should have actually responded to the Orcish Bowmaster when they could only cord for 1. Okay, I'm just going to let this resolve then. They're casting a legendary black spell. Which one is it? Grist or Yogg? It is Yogg. Okay, um, I think I have to bolt the spike feeder here. Is that even true? Minus one counter. I don't think that's true. All right, that resolves. Okay, they are Court of Calling. Does Hepatra just go infinite over the top of Lightning Bolt here? I wish I knew how this works. This is going to be Hepatra. Yeah, so Hepatra just dumps a ton of snakes into play. And they can basically just delete my Tarmogoy for free. And I can't kill Yogg in response, so I guess this just happens. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, so this just, they could pay X life and kill Tarmogoyf, basically, and draw X cards. And they're keeping their Death Touch Snakes over Orcish Bowmaster, that's interesting. Isn't that, like, just free to sacrifice? Losing their Wall of Roots? Oh, these become untapped. Alright, it converts your tapped creatures into untapped ones. I see. Okay. Maybe I'm supposed to bolt Habatra now. They can currently cord for less. Alright, uh, bolt Habatra, I guess. Moment of truth. If they have another cord, there's probably some trick they could do to just beat me here. Alright, they just sacked Hepatra. Or no, they sacked another snake in response. Hepatra will be sacked last, I guess. Or they sacked a snake onto Hepatra, which made a snake. That's just a free... But not a free card, but at the cost of one life, it's a card. And then Goyf is little. Then Bolt resolves. And then Goyf is dead. Okay, they have eight cards in their hand and six life. Colony Garden. The busted tech. They have nothing that can attack here. They can gain four life with Spike Feeder. I'm just going to get the Ketria Triome. I've been dancing around the Ketria Triome like a value piece for most of this league. I don't think I was wrong, but it definitely seems like it's not going to go where I need it to this time. Okay, I can just shove Titania. That taps me out into this engine. Does that matter? I can use Ren to ping a snake. I cannot get Delirium here. Yeah, I think dealing one to a snake is worth doing. It's just one less thing they can do on their turn. Oh, they're courting right now. Court for X equals one. Got a young wolf. And sacking young wolf. And then they sack the snake to minus one the young wolf. I mean, their life total is low. But, I mean, there's a lot that could go wrong here. Okay, I'm going to play Wooded Foothills. Fetch, get Stomping Ground, play Titania, who will regrow a fetch land, and then represent Paseju. Feel like that's the best I can do this turn. They could also just minus three Titania in response to this trigger, and then I don't get a 5 3. Alright, no such happenings there. Okay, so I can defend against Soul Cauldron. 
but they've certainly done enough here that I suspect they can just court or in some way tutor for whatever they need. Agatha's Soul Cauldron resolves. And they took a minus... They're minusing off the Spike Feeder. Is this an infinite loop somehow? All right, they gain two life. Okay, so they give Young Wolf the abilities of Spike Feeder. Okay, let's hope they don't realize what I'm up to here, but they have seen the Baseju, so they should know what's going on here. The stomping Ground, Shock It In, and Baseju the Cauldron. Or I should let them pick their target first. No, I shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's a separate... Yeah, I want them to commit. I want Spike Feeder to be gone, and I want them to commit to a target. And before it knows... Oh shit, th no, I fucked it up! It didn't even matter. I had it. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Okay, uh, now I just have to wait. I have to wait for them to sack the Young Wolf, and then I can besage you the thing. Shit. Yeah, I forgot that Young Wolf can put its own counters on itself. Wall of Root. Okay. I need them to put the Young Wolf in the graveyard, and then I'll besage you the thing. That was embarrassing. I got too clever. Should have just killed the thing. Okay, go into my turn. Draw. Still three card types in my graveyard. Yeah, rent's too big. I can't even, like, minus rent to kill itself. I'm going to play this Wooded Foothills. Just make sure I can make another 5-3. Attack with this one. These don't have Trample or anything. Nope, just 5-3s. Blocking with their Death Touch Snake. Gaining two life. And minusing onto Titania. Ren and six, deal one to Young Wolf. Do I want to play Chicken forever? Or do I just want to delete this Young Wolf while I can? I'm not even deleting the Young Wolf, though. Okay, I'm going to deal one to Young Wolf. I need this to be in the graveyard, at least for a moment. Orcish Bowmaster in response, okay. Dealing one to Titania. I'm going to fetch now while she can still make five threes. Breeding Pool tapped. The Seiju, the Soul Cauldron now. Okay, I still don't like my position, but... We at least got that check off the board. And I have a bunch of big creatures. Uh, my kingdom for an EI. EI turns on the Traverse and dig, just digs three for being an EI, but I'm currently shields down. They need to play scared here for me to win. Another Bowmaster. All right, they're working on my five threes. And they're... They're looping around on their young wolf here, so they have a bunch of material that can just draw a bunch of cards. And if they find a blood artist, they just win, or a Zulaport Cutthroat, whatever their version is in their deck. Grist, that's really good. That kills Tarmogoyf, and then I'm just dead to combat. One, two, three, four. They can attack me for four here. Bye, Goyf. I miss you. Outland Liberator. Colony Garden. There's so much stuff. I kind of hope they kill Ren so I can traverse. Um, okay, uh, I can traverse for Questing Beast. None of their creatures can block it. They can sack a bunch of shit to shrink it. Okay, uh, Questing Beast and Fury are both live. Oh my god, there's the EI now. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mana. If I EI, uh, there is still... Is there a fetchable in my deck? I boarded out that mountain. Was that dumb? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are six fetchables in the deck. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all here. Ugh. Okay, the Scalding Tarn doesn't work. I have to decide if Questing Beast or Fury is how I actually win this game. Or, I mean, I have all these Sagas in the deck, too. Saga, Ghost Quarter, Baseju. It's not like EI can't hit a mana source. It just... And I can still get Questing Beast, even if this misses. Okay, I'm going to do this. Blue, red. EI. There's Questing Beast, just right there. Okay. Questing Beast to my hand. Ghost Quarter to the bottom. Exile Unholy Heat. I'm going to heat the Yogg and see if they do anything. Like, if they just, like, draw two cards here, they die. And Questing Beast, once again, from the top rope. Are we doing it? Or they didn't draw any cards. A questing beast can't be blocked by small creatures, but my other stuff can. Attack my opponent. This also kills Grist, and might as well put the 5-3 in. Yeah, make your block. Okay, you lose the plant, you lose Grist, you're at 2. All right, here we are. That was an excellent expressive iteration. Another Grist shit. 
They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. I'm at one. I'm at one on the board. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Pendle Haven for Xaxes. Well done. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked with the elemental. Yeah, I was just gonna get chumped by a thing and dead for Xaxes. Shadow Spear coming. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I think I got a little frisky with the elemental right at the very end, but that was a really cool match and it went on a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Let's go. We got one round left. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is now available for pre order through Coalesce Apparel and will release in early December. These will sell out and take time to restock. The holidays are coming up fast. Place your pre orders for yourself and the Bosch and Roll fans in your life today. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market with awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll at checkout for 10% off your order at coalesceapparel.shop. On the draw for the final round, I'll keep this hand. It's got some interaction and cast some spells. See some more cards. Windswept Teeth. That's usually in control decks in this format. A traverse, okay. I can Breeding Pool traverse for Mountain, and that sets up Expressive Iteration. Grab the Mountain, and we're invested in the future here. Two card types in the graveyard already. Zagoth Triome. Yep. And Flooded Strand. This is probably going to fetch Sacred Foundry, and then they'll play a Beanstalk. Is that what we're doing here? Sacred Foundry? Oh yeah, there it is. It's all here. It's all happening. I don't really want to Basaju a up the Beanstalk and ramp them on turn two. I think I'm just going to drop my Spell Bomb and Shadow Spear in here. Start dumping out material, and then I can EI next turn with my land drop still up. Ren and Six. Okay, there are Ren and Six and up the Beanstalk deck. They're not a Cascade Beans, just regular control beans. And they will not miss any land drops for the rest of ever. They just picked up Windswept Teeth and then played Planes. So, got a little info there. EI. Let's find some action. Okay. Uh... EI to my hand, Brazen Borrow to the bottom, Exile Wood of Foothills, play the Foothills. And I am not able to kill this Ren and Six with Unholy Heat here, so I will pass the turn. There's the Heath we saw, they just picked up the Strand. I might sack Aether Spellbomb just for the Delirium and card draw here. I'm going to get Stomping Ground and then just draw a card. Another Unholy Heat. Not bad. Traverse. Okay. Expressive Iteration. Blue, red. Ketria Triome, Endurance, Ren, and Six. These are not really the cards I wanted to see. An untapped land would have been fine. Um, okay. I could try to play Ren here. Endurance is the card I think that I want the least out of all of these. Or Ketria Triome can go. Alright, I'll put Endurance in my hand. Ketria Triome on the bottom. Exile, Ren, and Six. Mountain, Ren, and Six. This taps me out, and there's a ton of stuff they could do to punish this, but if it gets in, even for a moment. Red, white, reprieve. Okay. It's back to my hand, which means I have to go to discard, which means I will discard the lightning bolt, which will give me delirium. But they're not done. Fetching in my end step. Okay, dumping lightning bolt. I guess it can't F6 because I have endurance in my hand. Omnath. Disappointing. Okay. They are going right over the top of us here. We didn't get under them at all. And a little too fair for this matchup. Or at least for this position in this matchup. Let's see if they start stringing together time warps. That's something a lot of these modern five color control decks are doing now. It's Omnath, time warp, draw a card from Bean, time warp again. Loop, loop, loop. Temple Garden doesn't cast time warp though. They do have Endurance. Knocks away my Delirium that I've clearly worked hard to create. And just firing me with their leftover mana. Just get the game over. Sure, why not? Okay, so I can get a land, a sorcery, in my graveyard. Alright, we're we're done. Uh, they Maybe if they didn't endurance me there, I can endurance their or, uh, unholy heat. They're two important things, then they lose, but not in that world. Okay, what's my play here? Gaining beans or planeswalker seems fine. Torpor orb, stopping their various elementals seems fine. I don't have high hopes for Ragavan to go coast to coast versus a Ren and Six strategy, but I think he still needs to be in the deck. Lightning Bolt seems kind of mid. 
unlicensed hearse could at least slow down the Ren wheeling and looping. Questing beasts, this could also be a ring deck. Rings, beans, Ren, just play it all. Okay, lightning bolts out. Maybe having one bolt in the deck as a win con with a Ren emblem is worth it over something like Endurance. As I have the Soul Guide Lantern and the Unlicensed Hearse to attack the graveyard. Yeah, I'll try it like this. Okay, I got a Saga game. This is the type of matchup where tutoring Zurin Orb and then shoving Titania on 5 mana and then just yeeting my board into 35 power could be the plan. That hasn't come up yet, but it is built into the deck. I am going to drop my Shadow Spear, I think. Between these, maybe, uh, was I supposed to plan to Expedition Map on turn two just for, like, Steam Fence? Maybe that's better. Deck's full of lands, though. I'll just draw another one. Told you. Urza Saga is in, and Expedition Map can go now. Sacred Foundry, Misty Rainforest for my opponent. Do we have beans? They tap mana, then untap their mana. I wonder if they're going to, like, besage you my saga. And they'd rather do it on my turn. Yes, okay, that is what happened. A Besa or Saga dies. I will use Beseju to get a mountain. Or no, do I just get the Steam Vents? Yeah, I'll just get the Steam Vents. And then I'll use Steam Vents to get another Saga. They seem worried about that. I'll I'll keep them. I'll keep the pressure up. Because I didn't need to shock in the Steam Vents if I was gonna. Just pass here anyway. To fairy, disappointing. That can bounce my Urza Saga again. Okay, unholy heat kills to fairy, but they are doing a good job treading water over there, making me not get anywhere with what I'm doing. Saga again. Surely they'll eventually run out of answers. Up the bean stock. Flooded strand, and there's more. Do they have a Ren? Do they have a second bean? Ren and six. Okay, it's all here. They've done it all. And picked up a Seiju, which can start to put me in a tough squeeze. I guess I just go in on Titania then, if they're going to be looping Beseju, killing my lands, but also ramping me. Just try to steam out a giant elemental train. Speaking of steaming out elementals, <laughs> that's a big one. And fetch land available. This is a matchup I called out specifically in the deck tech as one that might be troublesome, given how big they actually go. Okay, make the construct. They have exactly Teferi mana still floating. That's annoying. Use the ability. Get the Ketria Triome. Ren picking up a Seiju. Can't refire it right away. Fable. Okay, I was worried about Teferi, but that's pretty bad too. Okay. Now I should fetch in the end step and get reading pool and then i mean this is the chance to do stuff with titania I'm gonna play a saga play titania hope they can't solitude her in response to her trigger all right we're in there i will get at least one five three probably exactly one five three the fable gets to trigger they've Picked up so many cards with Ren. This is just raw card advantage. Wow, they still didn't want to use it. Hand's already perfect. That's good news for me. Omnath doing stuff. Basic planes. Boatload of mana. All I gotta do is Solitude here or Fury. Yep, Fury. That sucks. But at least make them choose their targets first. If they put three on Titania, one on Construct, and then beside you my Shadow Spear, that solves all of their problems. Not that they even have any problems here. They're doing just fine. Get a stomping ground into play tapped. Okay, I'm good. We don't need to keep playing this game. Uh, That would just be another 10 minutes of me losing miserably. Okay, a solid start to the league. The Yawgmoth match, you could argue I made a mistake in by attacking with the elemental. Maybe I just leave that back because it's not connecting anyway and then we're not dead and then we don't. Who knows? Alternate timeline, maybe this was a 4-1. That four-color matchup felt like I was never competing in any game. I didn't have the Ragavan start, but with only four Ragavan in the deck as one drops, it's not like we're a Ragavan and Dragon's Rage Channeler deck. That's just kind of a different deck. Though, I mean, you could build your deck that way. 
that's another cool thing that cares about Delirium. Maybe a slightly smaller Urza Saga package and then more DRCs. But I kind of like the the big top end of the deck where Ragavan gets annoying underneath and then you do some stuff in the middle with Tarmogoyf and then start tutoring bangers at the top end. This deck is a lot of fun. Like I said, at the start of the league and at the end of the league, I'm a little concerned about his position versus the top decks in the format. However, against many of the the middling and other options in the format, I think this has a lot of cool decisions, a lot of play, and if you like these 30-40 minute matches every time making tons of tiny decisions type of gameplay, I can recommend this deck. Rowan, your deck is sweet. Thank you again for sharing it with us. Everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.